Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, go ahead, good, please. good afternoon, everybody. I am Sotto Levere from University of Calabria. This uh, research uh, is based in uh, five points introduction, experimental investigation, finite element modeling, numerical experimental comparison, and conclusion. The world is rich of historical building of mansory or reinforced concrete structure. Generally, we can work on, on this by repair, an example after the earthquake, or strengthen by using a composite material, such as FRP system or FRCM system, but with different type of fiber, PBO fiber or basal fiber. The FRCM system is made up of PBO fibers and inorganic matrix. In addition, the PBO fiber is composed in, uh, of yarn in both principal direction. The fabric used is some balanced and coated fabric mesh in this kind of campaign. The specimen adopted in this pendant campaign have a score cross section equal to 150 millimeters wide and 1000 millimeter long. The specimen were enforced with four longitudinal 80 millimeter diameter steel bars along the entire column height. The concrete was 20 millimeters. The shear enforcement consists of the 80 millimeter diameter stirrups spaced and 100 millimeters center to center in the test region. In order to avoid the end of the effect at the top, the best column, uh, <clears throat> the specimen were over reinforced for a length of 150 millimeters. In particular, the steel tube space was reduced. Moreover, more for longitudinal bars were added. In total, we have, long, we have eight longitudinal bars. It's possible to see in the cross section A, A prim, B, and P prim. Finally, the longitudinal bars were welded to the steel plate used to cap here and over there to cap the column to maintain the parallelism between the loading end of the columns. The FRCM, okay, the FRCM was cartridge in two phases. First phase, only PBO dry fiber was cartridge by the tensile test. On the right, we can see the test setup adopted and the result. It's possible to see, in order to evaluate the strain, was used an extensometer with a base length of 15 millimeters. On the bottom, we have the matrix result by a compression and a flexural tensile strain. The second phase, the first CM system matrix plus PBO fiber was cartridge by a dirty tensile test. In this figure, it's possible, uh, it's a reported test setup. Moreover, at the, <clears throat> at the last figure, on the left, a reported tip. Sorry. On the side of each specimen, there is the two LVD T, colored A and B, in order to evaluate the vertical displacement. At the bottom, the curves are reported in terms of stress versus strain. It's possible to divide the curves in at least two phases and result only the ultimate phase reported in the table on the right, in particular in terms of strain, stress, and tensile modulus. The technique adopted in order to strengthen the columns is the following. First step, the preparation of the external surface of the column. Application by some plastic. Application of a board in order to control the thickness at the top of the base of the column application the internal matrix layer, application of the PBO layer, and then application of the external matrix layer. The thickness adopted for each matrix layer was three millimeters. The column were combined by two different configurations. In the first one on the left, the PBO FRSCM jacket were wrapped continuously on the column height, while in the second, they were wrapped discontinuously. Here, here, over there. Three different schemes were adopted. In the space of rapid discontinuance, varying both the length of WF and of the PBO FRCM strips and their spacing SF along the column, along the column eight. The length 
reported is millimeters. In this figure, it's reported as setup adopted. In particular, at the top of the column was applied the load cell, while in order to measure the excellent displacement, were installed two elevated T's. The lateral strain instead was measured for each side of the cone by four elevated T's. The centric load was obtained by the convection showing figure. It's possible to see the load eccentricity and the column axis. In both the figure, a reported result in terms of up load versus axis displacement without eccentricity and with eccentricity equal to 25 millimeters. In all test column, the curves describe the response of converted column present at first branch almost linear until the peak load and the softening non-linear post peak branch. The ascending branch of curves relative to extended load columns is more pronounced than the one obtained for the concentric load columns. In figure on the left, the peak load obtained between the reinforced column, continuous and discontinuous, it's, pos <clears throat> it's possible to observe a small variation, equal to 1.5%. Instead, for, from the figure on the right, according the variation in terms of peak load was possible to observe, and it, it equal uh, to 10%. The failure of the column <clears throat> was due to a crashing of the concrete with the buckling of the longitudinal steel bars at the end of the test region, bottom or top. The failure configuration of same column are illustrated in figure. All tests were modeled in three dimensions to PD, replicant then column entirely. The load was salted at the top of the columns, while at the bottom the, the columns was clubbed. In addition, the mesh was based on the theoretical geometry with linear interpolation function via a phi E element called 3D C4. The external reinforcement was modeled by a macro model approach without distinguish the external reinforcement and the concrete substrate. They were con the tests were conducted in the specimen control. The material model adopted in this uh, is a report in this slide. The considerable law of compressed concrete was modeled using the proposed report from Augenstead. The tensile concrete was modeled with a linear elastic branch until the tensile strength of concrete, and then a descending linear branch. The bars longitudinal steel with a bilinear hardening branch were modeled, while the confinement part are modeled with the considerable law of confined concrete, compressed concrete proposed from the ACI 549. For structure made of brittle materials such as concrete or manzoni, a stable structural response due to the propagation and the or strain softening can usually occur, making it difficult for common static solution strategies such as interruption or clamp, obtain a convergent solution. To overcome the convergent difficulties, no linear analysis was solved using a dynamic approach. In particular, in order to obtain a static solution, the radio between the kinetic energy and the total energy of the model should be less of 5%. In slide, I reported the comparison between, in terms of curve, in, uh, in, uh, in terms of upper load versus axis displacement of the experimental numerical curves, and on the left, in terms of crack pattern. The analysis of the figure on the left confirmed that the numerical model will predict the response of the convent columns. The predicted peak load resulted 6.5% higher than the experimental value. The numerical procedure is also effective in predicting the failure mode, concrete crashing, and the buckling of the longitudinal steel bars. The predicted configuration is identical to experimental one, even the failure zone was located at the top of the test region during the testing, while the numerical model is was located at the middle of the test region. Other, other numerical comparison. Uh, the effect of numerical procedure was valid by the comparison between its prediction and the expanded result. For this end result, for tests previously conducted by the authors were considered. At the bottom of the slide, I report on the, the reference. With reference, the specimen confined with one layer of PBFRCM, a chained cloud, and the numerical expanded comparison is reported in figure on, on the top. 
Finally, the following concluded remark can be drawn. The PBO FRCM system is effective in confirmed during the concrete column. The peak load value increases on average 15% and 90% for congenric and eccentric axial load respectively. The confirmed configuration does not influence the peak load value of the column test and the congenric load. The variation is less than 1.5%. A more cost in the variation up 10% was recorded in COM extended low added. The proposed num uh, numerical procedure will predict the whole value of FRCM confined reinforced concrete columns. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the interesting um, presentation. I'm, allow me to take a look at uh, the questions. If there are any questions, please post them. Um, and um, I will be um, happy to read the questions to you. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Um, could you please elaborate a little bit on the numerical model that you used for the FRCM layer? How did you account for that and how did you kind of in a way model the contact interface to be able to address the confinement issue? Okay, uh, I modeled the um, concrete and the XN FRCM matrix and the PBO with a same uh, element. Uh, the element was characterized only a compression by the, the by the equation find the ACI 549 in order to model the whole element combined with the only element. I don't consider it the, the external and the concrete substrate. Oh, so, so there is no there is no bonding issue or there is no not a different... No, 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 no bonding, it's just the only element, uh, external and the concrete. Okay. So if you put two layers, it means that maybe your thickness is just maybe increased by the thickness of the layer. Is that correct? Uh, yes, my, in this uh, slide, I don't consider in this experimental, I don't consider the two layers. Okay. Prob probably in the next uh, work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your um, for your presentation. Um, Thank you.